Yo, y'all gotta check out that new Lil Wayne and 2 Chainz. That shit is jamming. Kali Grove, I think that's what it's called. I've been, been listening to it all week, man. It's, uh, it's pretty fucking dope. Today I want to talk about how I prepared for my first cybersecurity conference and spoke at it. I would just go ahead and put this disclaimer out ahead of time. This isn't about public speaking or getting over your fears. You're always going to have a little bit of a fear of public speaking. You can't let that shit keep you from getting on stage. If you do, you're a coward and you probably need to reevaluate your life. We're men and we go out and we kill shit. So if you fear getting on stage, you need to check yourself. If you fear that you don't have anything interesting to talk about, that's a different story. You could just do that by talking and getting into the field and knowing things. For me, I know that people would rather hear about avoiding mistakes before they want to hear about trying to learn something new. And so that's how I build my presentation. So let's get on into it. So I'm chilling, ain't shit going on. Um, and I get a LinkedIn message from a guy named Fernando Thomason. Now, background on him, he was a warrant officer at the CPB or the Cyber Protection Brigade. That's where I currently work. And he did some awesome shit. I always wanted to be like this brother. Uh, he is the reason why I'm a warrant officer because I believed in what he was doing and I wanted to emulate him but just put my own style on it. He is very forensically focused. He knows how to get in a Windows image and hunt down things like shell bags, prefetch, um, and cash part, like all of that stuff, Eric, Eric Zimmerman tools, you name it, he knows how to do that shit and he knows how to do it well. I know how to do it, I just would need to Google a little bit to get warmed up every single time, but I would say he's the man with that, he's the man with PowerShell as well, he invented um, under the wire, not over the wire, if you've, ever, if you've done anything with PowerShell and you got deep in it, you've heard of him. Wired Pulse, he goes by that as well. I think he goes by that on Twitter and he, I think there's a site. I put his information in the bottom, but the dude's hella fucking dope. And I'm, I couldn't think of enough for his contributions to the brigade. I remember when ransomware came out and no one knew what the fuck to do with it. And he set up a honeypot for ransomware, like, like literally endangering all of his shit at home just to get a little bit of extra training in and I thought that was so weird yet so dope just just like me weird and dope and, and he went for that shit bro but anyway he hits me up I didn't even know who the he knew who the fuck I was so when he hit me up I'm excited he's like man I saw your YouTube videos keep up the good work I'm like bro that means a whole lot like crazy it's crazy because we're on I'm on the same team that he was on at the brigade and, and I was just telling him, telling him, yo, I'm just trying to follow in your footsteps. Not necessarily what he did, because I can't copy what he did. Like, he already blazed his trail, but the effort wise, right? He's like, yo, just hit me up. I want to run, like, I just want to run some things by you. We get on the phone or whatever. He's working for Mandy and working for Google, you know, getting big money and, or, you know, doing big things. And he shows me his process, his methodology as far as how he gets these presentations like how he gets to you know speak and what he does is he has a spreadsheet he within a spreadsheet he has a name column he has a for, for the presentation he has a synopsis where he kind of writes out the description for the event and then he has an email he has like a few emails so that he could submit to the same conference more than once and I thought this was genius because now he's maximizing his Excuse the, the uh, noise in the background, it's my son making uh, race car noises, but he maximizes his chances of getting uh, getting chosen to go to that conference. And so he's done B-sides like numerous times and stuff like that. So as he's running me this game, I'm like, I'm soaking it all up or whatever. So he's like, good luck, you know, do your thing. I know you got a lot to talk about. And so once I get off that conference call, like I'm super motivated, super juiced up. I'm telling people that I'm I'm gonna be there. I put it out to everybody at work. Disclaimer though, like or or, or spoiler, not disclaimer. Like 99% of the people that said they were gonna show up didn't show up. So I don't know people. That's human nature. Anyway, back to the story though. So I kind of procrastinate for most of the time. Like I didn't prepare at all. And so when I was like a month out, the thing was like October 7th. So September the 7th, I did my first rehearsal and I had these slides. I had these bland ass fucking slides. And my, my idea was to always 
I, I always had the idea to hit people with questions in the audience because I wanted to keep my audience engaged. I didn't want people to, you know, go to sleep. I didn't want people to walk out. I wanted people to literally stay focused the whole hour. And I knew the only way to do that with a bunch of nerds is to challenge their intellect. Like, get into their psyche. Like, challenge them where they feel like they're the best, which is their intelligence and their analytical processes. So I was like, what better way to present than to go heads up with that, right? Um, instead of presenting a tool or some bullshit, right? So, yeah, that's how I built my presentation. Um, hit them with hacking questions, hit them with blue teaming questions. But my first initial prototype slides, like as I was going through it, I realized A, my slides was boring as fuck to look at. And then B, I was doing way too much talking about myself. And those are the things that I fucking hate when I go to these presentations. Like, I want, I like to see crowd participation. Frankly, I like to see the crowd actually take over the presentation. You feel me? Because that, it, it, it does two things. It lets the crowd have fun, and then it gives you feedback as to what people actually fucking want, right? And so, as I'm doing it, I'm like, I started hating myself, bro. I'm like, fuck no. Like, I have to redo this presentation. So, um, I stopped like mid, <laughs> mid rehearsal and I take a few more weeks, like two additional weeks. Um, and then I get an idea. I say, okay, what if I made it like who wants to be a millionaire, right? What if I made, what if I gave it a premise? What if I gave the participants points? What if I gave the two highest or three highest scores a prize? It ended up being two highest because B-Sides only had two prizes. And what if I just made it all out challenging, right? So I came up with the slides, the the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire slides. And I felt the need to only rehearse where the slides were. Not necessarily what I wanted to say. And there was a reason why I did it like that. If I can't look at a slide or a piece of, of a, a product or anything that I've done and instantly speak from the heart about it, I'm not passionate about it. That's my rule of thumb. Like if I literally have to like read off of a script, I'm not passionate about that shit and that and I shouldn't be there. And that's why I'm not a commission officer. That's why I'm a one officer. It's like as a one officer I get to be more passionate about the things that I do. So as I'm building these slides, I um I another thing that I did was I didn't want it to start with an introduction. I wanted to keep people off guard. Like, as soon as you sat down, I was going to hit you with a question. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, because I, I, I felt like it's not just a presentation. It's like a battle. Like, I'm trying to keep you awake. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like I'm, I'm, I'm dancing with you in the boxing ring. Like, I don't want you to, I don't want your brain to go to sleep. I don't want you to check your phone. I don't want you to think about what you're having for dinner, you know, tonight. I don't want you to think about, like, your girl and why y'all having problems. I literally want you to keep your eyes on me the whole time. So literally, when I began my presentation, I hit him with a question. Then I hit him with another question. Then I hit him with a story. And then I said, I'm going to I'm going to uh, introduce myself in a minute. And then I hit him with another question. And then I, I introduced my wife. I introduced my kid. And I introduced me, of course. Told him where I was from and, and the things that I did. And people actually liked it. People started clapping and stuff like that. So I don't know what to say about that. I just did my own thing. I just did it how I wanted to do it. And if I could give like actual specific advice on that, I would just say don't be corny, bro, because you got like you got this one life to live and you know, people are whether it's your presentation, whether it's your car, whether it's how you dress, whether it's how you talk, people are, people are going to believe uh, or remember you. And so if you choose to conform in every single category that you can, People are going to remember a conforming motherfucker, and that's not very, very interesting to remember, right? So, again, I just wanted to come in that presentation to keep people off balance. And so, that's pretty much it for the advice. I got through the, the exam. Exam, fuck. <laughs> you know, in my mind, I got through the presentation, and it was cool. Um, and that's how I prepared, brother. So... I didn't, I know what people will probably say, you know, they'll say to get your slides to rehearse, like, to do it like a whole TED talk, but that's, that's corny to me, brother, like, I, I just, 
I don't like don't get me wrong now like I know a lot of people paved the way and a lot of people did cool shit for us to be where we are but like I, I just didn't want to go out like that like I wanted people to actually watch my shit and so moral of the story what I would take away from this is several things number one um going back to public speaking and stuff like that just to recap bro I'm not a public speaking expert I just go out there and do my thing I had a leg up because I used to, back in the day when I was a teenager, I used to rap. So I've been on a bunch of stages. I've been in situations where I could have got shot for saying the wrong thing, wearing the wrong color, rapping the wrong hood, etc. And I still went up there and performed because I wanted to be somebody. And so I've always had something in my life pushing me to get in front of people and talk or rap or whatever the case. Um, Another thing that I would say, like another lesson learned that I would take from this is um, when you're preparing, if you don't like it, like be willing to do something about it. Be willing to do something about it. So if you know your presentation is putting you to sleep, like be willing to delete the whole thing and start over. Because I'm telling you, like shit boring to you, she's going to be boring to other people. If, if, it's, if you're passionate about it, like I don't rehearse none of these videos. Like I'm passionate about it. People are going to fucking listen. I know that. The third thing that I would say though is like make make sure that you you don't take yourself too seriously because from those mistakes, I, and I'll give you an example. There was one um, question in my presentation where it was supposed to be a payload that the attacker ran to get a, a reverse shell but the fucking payload had had a uh, had a local host address in it so how the fuck is he gonna get a call back if it's a local host address in it so somebody called me out and um i thought it was hilarious bro so i i just laughed it off and, and poked fun of myself like i was like this presentation is imperfect people and people started laughing so attacker puts this yeah, I see what you mean now. I do have local holes here. Presentation's not perfect, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> There's definitely local holes there, but um, just pretend like that's not local holes. And as those slips, trips, and falls comes up, like you can learn a lot from that just by being human. You know what I'm saying? So that those are the things that I would say. Um, you can get paid for these. If you wish to get paid, obviously build a name for yourself and then start going for the ones, like start, um, use the advice Fernando gave me to, to choose better ones. And it might not be for you, like speaking might not be for you. I'm not judging you if, it, if it's not for you, but if you feel like it is for you and you're avoiding it, you're a coward. And you need to, you need to drop whatever fears you have and actually go for it, is what I would say. I know I'm saying stuff twice, but if I say it twice, I really mean it. So that's it. I'm going to stop beating the dead horse. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe or just hit me up directly. Shout out to all you guys that, that comment a lot on my videos. Um, so there's, there's subscribers. I got like a, a, a thousand or so. But then there's certain people that like just keep up with your content. And... They don't have to like you guys got kids wives girlfriends or boyfriends whatever you got like i ain't judging you got all you got your life and yet you support my material and i know it as busy as i am like bro that mean a lot because bro i'm gonna be honest with you bro i don't got no time for youtube and that's not like on no bragging shit. like i literally don't got time for youtube i don't i barely got time for like facebook and instagram and and it's it's simply because like shit be rolling like family um trying to keep myself educated like traveling and stuff like that shit be rolling bro so like i know it's the same for y'all and yet y'all still find time to support me so like what can i say man when i make my million dollars bro i promise you y'all y'all are honor honorary guests like to the camp bro or, or y'all 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 permanent inductees to the camp bro i swear I just gotta get the get the millions first. I'll see you guys probably next week. I'm gonna be doing some traveling in the next week, so this ain't gonna be the same background. I'm gonna take my green screen and I'm gonna take my my black screen so that I could kind of like talk to you guys and and I don't wanna like be showing the hotel and shit, but maybe I have to. We'll see. But appreciate you listening. I catch y'all guys on the next one. Peace. Yeah.